Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, she is now the two-time defending Michigan State champion in the 100 breast. She set the Michigan State record at 0048, and uh, she's not swimming in college. She has committed to the <laughs> Division I Minnesota Duluth to play ice hockey. Today, we are sitting down with Mackenzie Soroki. How are you Hello, doing? How's it going? Good. <laughs> hockey things making more and more sense to me you're you're doing this podcast outside in uh, in the middle of november uh you're in michigan I, again how, how is the weather right now in michigan um it's a little cold not not as bad as it can get sometimes but pretty nice day today uh i mean it it, it looks nice i wouldn't opt for outside but i'm you know i I've lived in Texas for the past five years. And so I'm, uh, I'm a little more acclimated to the warmth, but, <laughs> um, so let's, let's get into this. Uh, you're, we're going to get into your athletic background. We're going to get into your swimming, but let's talk hockey first. I think the biggest surprise for a lot of our readers, including myself, you've already committed to play women's ice hockey at a division one level in college. You're, you're not going to be swimming or at least that's the plan right now. Can you tell me about what went into that decision for you? Um, it just kind of, I've been playing hockey my whole life. And that's, I mean, swim was just kind of a thing starting in high school competitively. So when I started talking to colleges, it was more of like, I didn't even think I was really going to go and swim. And for me, I <laughs> every day, it's just, I, in a way, it's more enjoying for sometimes to be on the ice than in the pool I give so much credit to swimmers because it is a lot of work and like so is hockey but I I understand swimmers like feelings like because it's a it's a grind every day to get in that pool you know in the mornings at night and uh it's just different too with playing or like playing hockey and swimming is like uh swimming like all the hard work you do get shown pretty much like by your times and that and like you can get that success when it comes to hockey it's more of you know a team sport I mean you could be a great player but you, it, you also got to use your teamwork abilities and that's what brings you on top compared to with swimming it's like you put all you got out there and you end up on top like I, I kind of like getting both <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah. Oh. <clears> that seems like a, a pretty, yeah. Like you said, that seems like a pretty distinct difference, um, athletically. For so sure. you've been playing hockey pretty much your whole life or, or when did you start playing hockey? I think my first team I started playing on was when I was like seven. I think I was in like first grade when I saw it. I, I don't, I can't remember how old I was, but I remember like I have three older brothers and a younger sister. And all three of my brothers were playing hockey and uh, I would go to their games and be like, I want to do that. So uh, they got my parents had me going to learn to skate and I showed up in hockey gear and all these kids were just in skate and I had a stick. I had all this and all these kids just showed up in just skates and a helmet because it's learn to skate, not learn to play hockey. And uh, so I did that. And like in my first day, I got like bumped up three levels and then uh I went to like learn hockey or something. And ever since then, I, I think I did that for like a year, just kind of learning how to skate. And then I, and then I joined my first team. So it, it's been a while. I was just about to ask that, you know, it's like, obviously in swimming, you like learn to swim, you learn the strokes and then you kind of progress through that. So I was w wondering if learn to skate was something, but you, you answer that it is. Um, and so you, you've been playing hockey forever. Is, is hockey a year round thing for you? Like, like swimming is for, you know, for us. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that was kind of the other thing is like, I never really took into swimming year round because 
hockey's pretty year round. Like I, my season starts in like August and we go all the way to like March. And then right after we end our season, we have tryouts in like May usually in whatever team you try out with. You're like, that's going to be, you have like a spring season. That's really short. And really for like swim or for hockey, I know it's like different for swim, I think, but like, uh, we use like the whole summer to train for your like season. So you're pretty much like, that's where the hockey players are. They, we take like initiative or we take like all the chance we, all the chances we can get to get on the ice, get to the gym and work harder and harder. And it's really your development like point in the summer for like the two, three months. And then you're right back on the ice for that long season. So it's, it's pretty year round. And I mean, there's a lot of like camps and stuff people do in the summer uh, like I was at the USA camp this year. So it, was, it felt really year round for me because like right when school ended, I went to a camp and then came back and then went to a camp, came back, went to a camp. And then my hockey season started and my swim season started. So it feels goes by. I mean, there's no really off season, I guess. Or, mm-hmm. Well, there is like an off season, but uh, I like if you, the higher end athlete you are, most most of those people that's that's when you need to take like take the time the most to put in the work to get better uh, so. before we go any further i think i just saw a snowflake was that is that accurate is it snowing there or no uh i don't think so not yet okay i made that up sorry i'm i'm just i'm concerned for your health because you're, you you look like you're in this cold environment and i'm i'm a wimp but <laughs> anyway, so for, so it sounds like, like you said, the, the better you are, the less time you're taking off. You, you're committed to your craft as, as w- are a lot of athletes, swimmers, hockey players, obviously, otherwise. And so um, during the hockey season, what is like, what's a typical week look like? How often are you competing and how often are you practicing? Um, well, when I was with like my honey bake team because now I'm playing for high school which is a little different but in the past years it was more because it's like a triple a team so these kids are coming all around from like Michigan or some even live like in Ohio so they have quite a drive so usually we would practice on like Tuesday Thursday and Sunday but sometimes it would get moved to like Tuesday Wednesday and then we would have a tournament on the weekends where you would have a Thursday as your travel day and then we would play two games on Friday two games on Saturday and two games on Sunday and then every once in a while you'll have the weeks where you just have regular season games which could be just weekday games or even on the weekend so it it changes up a lot but a lot of times I'll either be Tuesday Wednesday and then Friday Saturday Sunday with a tournament or it'll be Tuesday uh, Thursday Saturday with just practices depending on what the week is so, I mean, that sounds time consuming, but in a much different way than swimming. Um, For sure. So, so like on the, on the, on a week where you don't have a tournament, let's say, are you doing other things, you know, like physically, athletically on those days when you don't have hockey practice? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's, that's kind of when I say like, I, I go to the gym by myself, you know, I, I think it's important. Like, I feel like a lot of character for people builds off is when no one's watching. And I feel like that's kind of where I think I need to, I need to get stronger is by doing it on my own. Like no one's going to, no one's going to be there 24 seven to be, all right, go to the gym, go do this, go shoot pucks. So a lot of the times the days I don't, I'll go to our rec center and work out. And then they have like a, inline rink which is just uh like fake ice kind of where you can like rollerblade or shoot pucks and I'll just sit there shooting pucks for like an hour or two and work out after or run or just just keep going and try to get better every day so you you're you're pretty disciplined no matter what uh, very <laughs> <laughs> so how what is the age difference of your siblings I mean are they pretty close to you are you training with them a lot or or is it is this on your own most of it's on my own uh because well my brothers so I have three other brothers I think one's 22 or 23 well he just turned 23 
He's okay. 23, 21, 18, and then I'm 16. And my sister's birthday's on Saturday, and she'll be turning 14. So, I mean, we're all pretty much like everyone is born about two years apart. So, uh, but we're, we, there's a little bit of age difference. So, like, uh, my brother, like, two of them are in college right now or three of them they all just one graduated this year I still feel like he's he goes to local college so he lives here so I forget he goes to college sometimes <laughs> but uh I mean they I don't really work out I prefer to be on my own sometimes I like I have like this mental thing where I like I push myself harder sometimes but I definitely have like uh sometimes like I'll go shoot pucks with them but most of it's on my own are, are your brothers, so they're all in college or just out of college, or, or did they play hockey in college at all, or, or are they still playing hockey? Um, yeah, one of my brothers who just got out of college, or just got out of high school, just first year of college, he's playing for a local team, Little Caesars. Uh, he's, he's doing that this year. And then uh, my second oldest brother, he went to Ferris State for a year and played hockey with um and then he which was a club he played on the club team and then uh then he came back home to he's doing his he's a he works with heating and cooling so he's pursuing that right now and and isn't at ferris anymore and then my oldest brother he went to grand valley on the division three team and he played there for three years and his junior years uh which was his last year that he decided to play. Uh, he they went to nationals and uh, it was actually in Dallas and uh, they lost, but it was a pretty cool year for them. No kidding, that's that sounds really exciting. Yeah, and they got to play at the where Dallas plays at the at the big arena, Dude. so it was cool. Not, no kidding. So yeah, that's that's great. Did you 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 got to go and watch him play there? Uh, that was during my spring break, so I was actually, uh, when it it kind it was kind of like a longer lasting tournament process, I think. So, uh, I still had school for I think like a day or two, so I didn't go. My dad went up there, uh, and we went, and then we were, uh, having a vacation in uh, Myrtle Beach for a couple days, I believe. So we were driving down and, but we were live streaming his games the whole time. So it was really cool though, to see him, see him where he was. That is really great. Dallas, not it's mm-hmm. missable it's, yeah. in, my, in my opinion, but um, that sounds really great. So, so you know, all your brothers played hockey. You're, you're more of an independent athlete though. Um, which is, which, which seems straight again, strange to me. It seems very conducive to swimming. However, um, t- so, so you're, you're really into hockey. Obviously you committed to Minnesota Duluth. What, uh, what was the appeal for you of Minnesota Duluth gen- like of, of that school specifically? Um, I didn't really want, I mean, some uh, with, with the hockey schools, a lot of them, there's a good population out East and then most of them are either there's like one or there's, I think just Wisconsin and then is in Wisconsin. And then there's a couple in Minnesota and then there's Ohio uh, for like D one. And I, I like the home feeling. So I was kind of looking more in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio area. Um, that's just what I prefer. Cause I felt like I, I would be more comfortable with, my lifestyle in a way rather than going out east to like the city and stuff so that was just kind of one of the reasons and that was a big like thing for me is just kind of feeling comfortable with where I'm at and uh after talking to the coaches like the whole coaching staff was amazing and then I went there on my visit and uh, I just I just loved everything about it and they're like high-end school I mean they make it to the the tournament every year the NCAA tournament they've won I think like four or five uh, national championships. So like they have a really good reputation uh, of being good, obviously. So uh, I know, I know I'm going to get pushed there and everything, uh, the whole community I was there and it, it just seems like a really good place to be. And that's where I want to put myself. So. Okay. So a couple of follow-up questions on that. Um, where in Michigan do you live? 
Uh, I live in Livonia. I okay. think it's like 20 minutes from Detroit. So Okay. Got it. Would you say it's like a suburb of Detroit? Um, or it's got its own thing. It's it's got its own thing. It's not too much Detroit, but I think okay. it's yeah, it's like 20 or I think it's like a half an hour away from there. But it's it's definitely different from Detroit. Okay. Do you know how big it is? Honestly, no. <laughs> okay uh and so then it's a uh, small it's a smaller city okay okay so yeah. secondly uh i think one of our commenters like kind of put your times in in some sort of simulator and uh you know was like it, through this simulator which isn't perfect you would be you know a top 60 top 70 swimming recruit in the nation uh, can you, you know, you mentioned that Minnesota Duluth has a great program. Can you contextualize where you might rank as a hockey recruit? Um, well this year I, uh, so as I was talking about like with the USA camp that I went through this year, uh, it was more of a select thing to get to this team. And, uh, it started off with like 140 girls. And then I got selected on to go to the 70 group. And then from there, there was 28. So I've been in top 28 or like that. So uh, for the USA hockey where I was, so pretty, pretty high, I guess. So. That, that is great context. Yeah. So I'd say <laughs> that sounds pretty high. Is there like, so for swimming, there's like a national junior team. Is, is that, similar to that or is there something else yeah, that's, that's similar that's, to that yeah that's where i was at this summer it was like the uh the they have like a u18 or like national team that they take for okay. uh for a camp or, or for to i think it's in sweden or something this year and they'll they'll do uh uh a world championship thing against uh just obviously other teams and they do that every year. So. So you get to go to Sweden? Uh, no, I was, there was, there was 28 of us there and I think they had to bring it down to 23. So I was one of them that got cut. So, but I also have this next year to do it. So. Okay. Yeah. But gotcha. it, it, I mean, it was pretty exciting to be where I was. So. I, I can imagine that it was, that sounds really cool to be with 27 yeah. of the other best athletes of your caliber. Um, yeah. so, so then, so let's, let's switch it to swimming. Um, how did you get interested in swimming or, or what brought you to the pool? Yeah, it was all involved around my mom. Like she got me into everything, um, just with her coaching at our local uh, pool, she was like, it's an outdoor swim club. And yeah, that's just the league I did in the summer. And I think I was, I was three when she first threw me in the water. And I mean, I, it, it's always been like one of those happy places I can go to. And it, it's also a, way, a good way to like, remember my mom, like, like she's the one who's got me in all this and pushed me like, that's kind of, uh, she's a big drive of mine. Like I, everything I do, I'm like, all right, like my mom won a state championship. Well, I got to do this. Like it, it just, it brings me joy to like, to, to see that I like do what she was doing and just kind of follow in her footsteps a little. So that was kind of one of the big things for me. So she coached your summer league team. And then I think you told me from there, some of the summer league swimmers were like, Oh, you got to come do high school now. Yeah, so my mom actually did coach our high school for a couple of years until she okay. got diagnosed with cancer, and then she was uh, she stopped doing that. But when I yeah, I was eighth grade and going into my freshman year summer, and we were just doing my Burton Hollow swim league, and a bunch of my friends were like, "You got to do it! Like you have so much fun in the summer! Like let's or like you should try uh, high school." And I was like. 
at first I was, I really joined last minute. Like I did not know any of the team. I was like, so I knew like really one girl well, and that was about it. Cause I grew up with her. Like she lived right down my street <laughs> and uh, she was like, you got to do it. And I was like, I don't know, like this is my, I've never swam competitively, like real. And this was like real. And I was like, ah. but I ended up doing it and no regrets at all. Like I've, I've loved every minute of it. It's been so fun. I just push every day. And yeah, that was kind of my start is my freshman year first. That was my first swimming like year round in a way, but it, I guess it's not year round, but uh just like in the winter, I've only swam in the summer. So that was my first time. It was also your first time like going to practices, I'm guessing on a, on a daily basis or swim practices at least. Um, and really getting, getting the feel for it in that way, I'm guessing. Yeah. That was like my first time being, I mean, my summer swim league. Yeah. We practice every day for an hour mm-hmm. about, and you know, it's, it's really nothing. It was really nothing. If I'm going to be honest, it was more of a, you're just like, it's give you something to do in the summer. And it was fun. And I mean, it was fun to race. I loved racing. And, uh, I think I, after I broke a couple of our club records in the summer, like that's when all my friends are like, you gotta do it. But, uh, with doing those practices, it was definitely like very overwhelming at first I got in and I I think my first practice I almost got out because I was like I was exhausted I did not like the most I did at my burnout practice was like maybe a 100 and that's where (laughs) my sprint Uh and that's where my sprinting comes from because that's why like I, I I only swim short distance I don't like long distance I like I, and especially with hockey I'm trained to go out for like 30 seconds to come off like give all you got and that's kind of like my mentality when I get to swim too is like, all right, you get out for your 20 set, your 50 and you're done. Like you just give it all you got. And that's why I don't like any long distance. Cause I don't understand pacing. I don't get it. I don't like it. Like, I just like to get, get out there and go fast. Like that, that's my favorite thing. But it, and that was like with practices, it became such more of a distance kind of swim when you're there for two hours and then morning hour and a half, and then working out right after we got out of the pool for like a half an hour, it was, it was a big change. Very big. It was a lot of, it was very overwhelming at first to go every day. And then we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, and then practice on Saturday in the morning. And it was a lot at first, especially for going from one hour practice to two hours and then swimming an extra hour and a half a day and doing my workout and then doing hockey on top of that. It was definitely a big switch in practices and, uh, that was one thing it took, took a minute to adapt, but once I got it down, it was, it was, it was all right. Dude, that's a lot. I mean, what is a uh, nine, nine practices a week in the water plus, yeah. You know, like you said, working out, like lifting or gym work afterwards, like, dude, yeah. that's intense. <laughs> Very Wow. Um, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't get out or I'm, I'm very impressed. (laughs) You weren't just like, Nope, I'm good. Um, so, so you, you get through your first year uh, of high school swimming and you told me you won the B heat at at Michigan state championships. You went one Oh four, you were the the fifth fastest time. Um, and and then you were just like, all right, that's swimming. I'm going to go back to hockey. Yeah. And then, well, after my freshman year, I was, that was my first time ever at like a big meet at her States. Like, uh, like I kind of liked it. I was like, I was like, this is fun. Like I want, and I, after standing on the podium, cause you know, be heat, you're standing on uh, the podium still. Right. And if you're ninth, you're first, you're first in your heat. So I was standing on that first place podium and I was like, <laughs> I'm ninth. But next year, like, I want this, like, first. I was like, I don't want, I don't want this, like, as ninth place. I want this, like, the real deal. I want, I want that gold medal. Like, that was in my mind. So, ever since my freshman year, my goal for last season, I was like, I want to be a state champion. I want to be a state champion. I don't care what it takes. I'm going in. And that was kind of, and especially with COVID being such a weird, weird year, that was like, it was kind of tough at times, but I mean, it all, it, 
it was it was a real mental challenge it like puts you puts you to the test like getting in every day like not knowing if your meet like states got canceled I think three it, they canceled it at first and then they were like all right we're gonna do this but it's gonna be a certain way and they got postponed and postponed <laughs> and then finally it happened so it was like all the way in January and I was like really into my hockey season and uh once taper started uh, I started my two week taper and I gave up hockey for two weeks. And that was like, oh, and I didn't do that my freshman year. And I did it last year. I was like, I don't care what it's taking. Like I'm resting, I'm doing what it takes. Like I want to be at the top. Like I'm not, I'm not settling for anything else. Like, and that was, that was my goal all year is like every night I would get in bed and no matter how long that season was, like it was so long, especially like, not having any meets, it was just weird practicing every day and not having anything. It, it was, it was, it was a struggle at times. I, it, it got really frustrating at one point. It's like after they kept postponing and it was like, why are we doing this almost? But then I would remember like, I want that. I want it so bad. And every night visualize, I'm going to be a state champion. I would visualize my race and I would visualize me touching laws and I would visualize myself on that podium. And then time came and like right before my hundred breasts, uh, I would like tell myself my f- last year, I was like, it's happening. Like, let's go, let's go. I'm going to be a state champion. And my last 25, I was just telling myself, you're going to be a state champion. You're going to be a state champion. And I touched the wall and, and that's, that was my dream from freshman year happening. And it was living out. And that was like, it was such a good feeling. And that's when after my freshman year, I was like, all right, like we don't settle. We don't settle. Like, what's next? And that's when I came down and I was like, state record, it's happening junior year. And yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's intense. That's, I mean, that, that's an amazing story. Um, it's really incredible. So congrats on that for, for, from a year ago. Um, and obviously, like you said, getting, doing that through COVID without competitions, with all the setbacks, um, so then, yeah, like you said, you're just, all right, state record next. Do you know who Miranda Tucker is or like anything about her? Um, I really did not know anything. Like I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I have, I don't really have any clue about something like that's one of my, I think it's so funny when people ask me and they're like, Oh, like, do you know who, who like this person? And I'll be like, no not really like the only person I really knew was Lily King because someone like someone told me that she she won the breaststroke in the Olympics like last or whatever Mm -hmm. and so that's how I knew her and I think I started following her on Instagram and I would just follow her because breaststroke you know uh and she was like really the only person I knew and then uh a bunch of my or a couple of my teammates who swam at LCSC uh were Miranda swam uh they were like oh like you got to beat her record she swam at LCSC like where we're swimming now so uh and I know I think she did she go to Michigan I believe Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and did she go to the Olympics I didn't go to the Olympics I don't but I think she might have gone to trials or something I don't know definitely went to trials I think she went Um, I think she went to yeah that was like all I really knew was that I heard she like swam at LCSC where a bunch of my friends are swimming. And then they're like, Oh, she's, I think she went to Michigan and they were like, they were so excited. They were like, you're going to beat her record. Like they were excited. And that was a push too. So to me, to me, this is funny because you, you were like, okay, I'm getting, I'm going to be a state champion. Nothing's going to stop me. I'll do whatever it takes. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to break the state record. I'll do whatever it takes, but you weren't swimming year round, <laughs> right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and not to say, you, you know, you were obviously working very hard. You were staying athletic. So like when you would get back, like when you came back for your sophomore season, when you came back for your junior season, how long do you feel like it took you to get into like swimming shape where you really had your feel down and you were really, uh, you know, like attuned with the water? Yeah, we start in August, and our first, like, meet isn't until beginning of se- September, but we start beginning in August, and it usually takes, like, that month, month and a half, like, where I really feel good. Like, my best is usually, like, 
mid mid September, I feel like all right, like it's game time. Like I feel I feel well prepared, and uh, that's that's usually when it. Is. So it takes about like probably I would say like six weeks to mm. start feeling like I'm like really good. I mean, I feel like in shape maybe a month in by the time it gets to the first meet, but like I feel really good after six. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that seems about right. Um, especially because you're, you're being very athletic for the rest of the year. So then when swim season happens, how do you balance that with hockey? Like, do you stop playing hockey? Uh, no, I play the whole season. So like my, (laughs) so I'll like go to hockey right after practice. And that was sometimes the struggle for me is like, I would have eight to eight 30 to 10 o'clock hockey practice. And then, Mm -hmm. and it was like, my practices, my morning practices were on Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I would have hockey on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I would have morning practice the next day, yeah. and that, that was so hard to do sometimes, and luckily, my my hockey rink's really close. It's like 15 minutes away compared to girls on my team who have hours to drive, and I'm very thankful that I had my rank right here. And yeah, it was, it was a lot, but I would sometimes get home from like 10, 10 or like anywhere from like 10 to 11 sometimes, but I would like want to come home and shower after I get home with hockey, like I'm sweaty, I'm gross. Like, and so every day after swim, I would come home for like, I would have like two hours span if that, um, depending how, how long like our workouts go and uh i would come home do my homework eat and then pack all my stuff for tomorrow cuz by the time i get home i'm like all i want to do is sleep and shower like so i pack my swim bag for the next day i pack i like i have all my homework done i put it all back in my bag make sure my computer's charged have that all ready throw my two bags there and and by the time i get home i just walk upstairs and then i shower and go to bed <laughs> yeah dang <laughs> yeah that's a lot are yeah. you do you drive yourself to all of these different things practice swim hockey school yeah I drive myself but the last two years like between uh I had my dad driving me all my freshman year and my grandma driving me all sophomore years so, like I respect their time so much because like driving myself I'm like <sighs> like I gotta go <laughs> everywhere so that was kind of – I have so much respect for all the driving they've done for me. Like, uh, no, it's it's a lot sometimes. I, I, like, I'll be driving, and the thing that keeps me going is music. But I'm, like, I feel – I don't, like, feel bad. I do feel bad in a way for how much they did have to drive me, like, every day, you know, school, and then after school, and then picking me up from – swim and then coming home and then driving to hockey and then coming back it was just like and then going to hockey tournament so it was a lot and then with like doing as you were talking about like how I would uh I would be playing hockey and swimming like during the season the only time I would take off of hockey is the the taper for like two weeks Mm -hmm. um and I for if I had to miss sometimes my swim meets were usually on Thursdays so sometimes I would have to miss like my practice for hockey on Thursday and go to my swim meet. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, my hockey tournaments are on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So sometimes I would have to miss Friday, Saturday for swim. And I would like leave Thursday after our meet to go drive wherever we had to go. Um, and then have practice Friday Sa- or then we would have our games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, I mean, they both keep me in shape for one another, which I like. So, uh, yeah, so it was, it was kind of like an even balance most of the time. Like sometimes I'll miss like swim practice for, um, my hockey tournament, but I was missing some practices for hockey to be at my swim meets. So it was like, both of my coaches are so understanding and, uh, I don't know what I would do if they weren't like I, I was I was scared at first that they were gonna be like she has to be here you know like da 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 and uh especially with swimming because like once you get out of the pool it's like for a couple of days you know it's it's 
I think it's so much harder to get back than like hockey. Like you miss a day. It's like, all right, you still know how to skate. You still want to do it. But like with swim, it's kind of like the feeling of the water and like, you know, getting loosened out every day, like that kind of thing. So uh, I was scared my coach, Greg Phil, was going to be mad at me for that. But he's so understanding. He's like, I trust you. Like, I, I know that you're getting a workout in. Like, you're you're not just sitting around all day. Like, you're doing something. So it was like whenever I'm missing something for something, I'm not, like, missing. I'm I'm really just, like, training another way almost. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Yeah. You know, you were – yeah, it sounds like you were – certainly being athletic and not, and not just, you know, slacking off to go, you know, eat junk food and hang out with your friends or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I can't imagine how, how your schedule, that sounds exceedingly busy, but, uh, you obviously you made it work. Um, it seems like the two week taper worked this year, you know, you were gunning for the state record. Um, can you tell me about the state meet this year and that double O 48 that you dropped in prelims in the hunter breast. Yeah. So, uh, it was kind of a weird feeling going into state meet this year, you know, like on time and not in January. It was, it was a different, it was a different feel, uh, like still being in my swim season in a way, like not being like four months away from when it would usually be. Uh, so yeah, it was out in Holland and it's prelims finals compared to like last year where it was just finals. Um, so prelims was, it was a rough meet for me. I do got to say, even though I broke state record, uh, in my medley relay went really well. Um, I think we went our best time and then my 50 free came and I got DQ'd and that broke me down. Like I, I don't really know. I still don't know how swimming works sometimes. And like, um, I guess I like flinched on the, I don't, I don't know how I couldn't tell you. Like, I think, I think I flinched or something. I don't know how DQ or I don't know. I really just go that, out there. That sounds and wait accurate. For the, I wait for the beat usually. So, mm-hmm. and then I leave and that's all I know how to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got DQ'd from that and that was like really frustrating for me. And I'm like very competitive with myself. And that broke me. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I had a really, like, hard time that me. I was, like, right after that happened, like, I got out and my coach was, like, you, you got DQ'd. And I, I, it, kind of, it was just shocking at first because I was, like, I didn't know what to say. Like, oh, no. Um, and I just, like, I kind of broke down a little. And I was, like, I was really hard on myself for a little. I was, like, how could you do this? You know, like all season just to get up to this and do this. And I was like, I was just bashing myself for like a good 10 minutes, like the whole, cause they have that break after the 50 free and I was just letting it rip at myself. And, and then I, I went out, I even went outside cause I was like, I was so fr- I get frustrated sometimes. And I was just so upset with myself and I went outside and I was like walking it off and I was like trying to breathe. And I was like, you know what? Like at the end of the day, like I can't go, I can't, I can't change that. Like it's gone. It happened, whatever. Like you you can't change it. Like you need to focus on what you have to do next. You're here for your teammates. You're here for yourself. You still have goals to get done. And I was like, you know what? Use your anger. I was like, go after it, get after it. And uh, I went in, I went in warmed up for my 200 free relay. And I was like, you know what? Use it, use it, use it. Like, and I kept telling myself, like, don't poke the bear. Like, they poked the bear. I'm the bear. Like, I'm going to go after them now. Like, and I was anchoring my 200 free relay. And I, I was like, I was fired up. I was like, oh, I was so ready to go. I, after I, like, came out, I was outside, came inside, listened. To, I threw my earbuds and I was, like, gathering myself back together with some music. And I was like, all right, it's game time. And I, swim you know get behind the blocks and I was pumping up I was pumping up with my team and I I was like all right now now is it now's the time like get that 50 back get it back and I went out and I swam that 22 five and I was like I was like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep and I was like that's right <laughs> and I was like let's go and that that like I was like all right it's it's we're going today like I don't care what happened like in the past it like now's my time like I don't care and so I threw that, like, 
behind me, even though I was like, you know, frustrated, but I was like, all right, what can you do now? Like that's in the past. What can you do now? And then I was like, uh, the 200 free relay, there's only like the backstroke and then the hundred breath. So I did like a 100 warm down. I don't know. I still don't. That's like one of my biggest problems is I don't swim year rounds. So like everyone develops a routine. They're like, Oh, I have to do this much of a warm down, like this much of a warm up. Right. And I just try to warm down to my arms get loose or like till I'm not like that sore. And I felt like I could have done a little more, but with there only being one event in between, like I didn't really have that much time, especially because it was prelims. So they're not like, there's no walkout or any of that. So, uh, yeah, I went, got in line and I was just like breathing the whole time. Cause I was still out of breath from my 50. So I'm just like <sighs> behind the blocks and, I got back there and I was like, all right, now's the time. Like, now's your time. Let's go after it. And I was like, I was visualizing my race. I, I was like, I held my breath on the, on the block. I was like, I don't know what a flinch is, but I'm not doing it. I was like, not doing it. <laughs> and I held my breath on the block and I went and I was like, I was just going after it. And at one point I could feel my arms, like, obviously my arms are burning by the last 25, but I think it's all like a mental game. Like that's all swim is. And uh, that's what like one of my, I think that's where one of my strong suits is, is my mental side of the game. And I, I give all that credit to my coach because he's the one who I like, I would have never thought of it, but my freshman year is when I, I really, well, la my freshman year, I like took it to heart, but not too much. But like after Miska meet, I went like a pretty good time. And I was like, oh, wait, this actually works. Because I was like, I was telling myself the whole race, I was like, as I get tired, I get faster. If I get, like, as, my, as I get tired, I get faster. I get faster. And I just kept putting that positive, like, thing in, like, energy in my mind. And I felt like I was getting stronger, even though, like, I, I know, like, it looked like I was probably getting, like, I was, my pace wasn't fast. But, like, if, if I wouldn't have been telling myself that, I would have been, like, you know, slowing down and drooping and, like, but me telling myself, like, all right, like, I get faster. I don't feel the pain. Like, I get faster and that kind of stuff. And that kept me going. And that was kind of what I do now is, like, I tell myself during my race, I'm like, I get faster. I get, like, I have this whole thing. Like, my first 50, I try to, like, I mentally take it out. I go, all right, you take that first 50 out. Like, it's a relay, right? Okay? Because, like, you just go crazy fast because you only have to do a 50. And uh -huh. that's what I think of it as. And then, so I tell myself, um during my first 50 I'm fast I'm gonna go fast I'm fast I'm gonna go fast the whole time while I'm going and then I get to the 75 and then I said uh one time at practice my coach is like he was like get crazy ladies and all of a sudden that like really triggered me and I was like holy crap get crazy like it was in my mind and I and then I went like crazy fast on my 25 and I was like because we were sprinting and I was like that's my new one so then I you would use that as my 25 and then my last with the 100, depending on where that one always switched sometimes, depending on what my goal is. Like at finals, it was like, I'm going to be a state champion. I'm going to be, and it kind of like drives me more to like not think about what I'm feeling to like, like train my muscles to think, oh yeah, you are, you are like, uh, so that was kind of like one of my things or like I'm going to break state record was one of mine this year. Like during prelims, that was my whole thing is like, I'm going to break, I'm going to break state record. I'm going to break state record. I'll just keep doing that till I touch the wall. And, and then I looked up and it was, it was there. So that's kind of one of the, and I was like, I was excited because I was like, after, after how frustrated I was with myself after that 50 pre, like I was like, like I was, I was proud of myself like it takes a lot sometimes to, like get back after it after like you, you lose that race like and I was I told myself at the end of the day I was like all right like you did what you needed to do and I I, I don't know how was that <laughs> I, I that's a great point I mean it, it sometimes it is hard to bounce back after a bad race or, or a bad game bad experience and uh I mean, it sounds like you did it, you know, and that's, that was really cool. Not only, not only did you, were you able to put it past mentally, uh, but you know, you were able to achieve your goal in light of that, um, in that state record. 
hitting the double O four. Okay. So, so you win your second state title in a row, uh, you break the Hunter breast state record. So what's, what's the deal? Like, are you, are, are, are you thinking about swimming anymore? Are you like, okay, maybe, maybe I'll keep doing this. Is, does Duluth have a swim team? What's going on? Oh, uh, unfortunately they don't, but, uh, like I talk to my family a lot and I like, one of my things is like, I think, uh, they have like these conversion apps where like uh, you can like change it to like, Oh, if it, it's not like, you know, hundred percent, like, Oh, you would go this. Cause it's obviously two different things when you're swimming long course, short course. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, uh, but my uncle last or the, this past season, uh, at my sophomore season, uh, when I went like the one one four or five, uh, he was like, Oh, he was like, this was, you could get, you could go to trials with that. And, and then I started thinking about it and I was like, oh, I could go to trials. Like, and I want, and I know like the next Olympics would be, I think 24, which would be like after I graduate. So like part of my mind's like, I want to train, like I want to, I want to do it. And that's like kind of one of my drives right now is like, I'm like, I kind of want to do this. Like, it would be sweet. Like, I think that would be fun. Like I, I would push myself to do that. And I do have that in my mind right now. I'm like, I, I think about it a lot. I, like, I don't want to give up swimming in a way. Like I think about it a lot, uh, but it, it's kind of hard just to kind of like pick between two sports and like, they're so different and it's just so hard. The, the biggest problem in place right now is just them being the same season. Like that, like hockey pretty much goes all year and, like a swim I don't know like with college how long the swim season goes but for like high school you know it's only like a couple months but I'm guessing college probably a little longer um but it just stinks because it's not like oh swimming's the spring and hockey's the winter like they are right on top of each other and that's kind of like the that's like I don't know how I would balance that out in a way like I feel like that would just be so hard because when it comes to like college to do get like a degree I want and uh you know be playing hockey and being top lines and like trying to get on the like playing time and then like between swimming is like I don't want to be elite especially once you're at that college level like you want that commitment and you want your players to show that commitment and I don't want to be the person on the team that like oh, she only comes to practice twice a week. And that was kind of like, I don't want to, I don't want to like leave out my teammates. Like uh, that was kind of like one of the hard things is like, I don't like, they kind of have like the same schedule. Cause like they'll all do kind of like a couple morning practices and then usually like after school. And it's just, I think it would just be so hard with like fitting in my, like, like my actual school. And then having, like, most of your pra- – like, your athletic directors, I'm pretty sure, just uh, – or academic, like, they, um, they like, build your schedule around – or, like, you know, they both build around each other to fit, like, what's best for you. And, I like, I don't know how that would work if I'm doing both. And I just – I think myself, I don't want to continue – like – I don't want to wear myself to the point where I'm not enjoying my sports at the same time. Like I think handling them sometimes could get it like frustrating and I don't want to really put that on myself. Like I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy like what I'm doing. And I feel like if it gets too overwhelming, it seems like a chore and I, that's like not what I want. And so that was kind of one of the things is like, I didn't want like my, I love them and I don't want it to get to the point where it's like, Oh, like this is so stressful. Like I don't know how I'm gonna do this with school and fit both of them today and do the mornings for both and like and I don't I I, lo- I love them. I love both my sports. So like I I like the enjoyment. I don't like I don't like a chore in a way. You know, makes total sense. I feel like that's wisdom that uh, not all athletes and humans your age have. Not all athletes and humans my age have. But uh, yeah, very sage wisdom. Um, you want to enjoy what you're doing. You want to enjoy your sports. And like you said, you want to be able to commit to them. So, you know what, 
you're still in high school. You've got a whole nother year of high school swimming. Um, swim fans and swim nerds like myself will, will just sit patiently and, and wait. And who knows, who knows what will happen in the future. We'll leave it at that. But Mackenzie, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat today. It's, it's been great hearing about your story and your athletic journey, and I hope it continues to go well for you. Thank you. I truly appreciate having me. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.